So with us today is Rebecca Hosking. Hello, Rebecca. How are you today? I'm doing excellent. And you? I'm doing fine. Thank you. So uh, where are you from then, Rebecca? Because, uh, you know, you mentioned about me and my Spanish accent and everything else. So where, where are you from originally? Uh, originally, I was born in Arkansas. I am a military brat. My mother is um, Mexican, and um, my father was from Arkansas as well. But um, I traveled a lot, and uh, after I left my parents' home, I continued the traveling. You know, being a military person, you you never stay anywhere for a very long time periods of time so i'm a restless soul and i move around a lot <laughs> <laughs> well you know i'm a military person myself right oh, okay no i did not know that yeah i served uh 22 years from 1971 and then i retired in 1993 oh excellent what branch were you in i was in the u.s army oh excellent most of my time i spent overseas so every three four years you know we'd be moving somewhere else and i'd be bringing the whole family with me so you know all my kids are they are like you, you know, they're just used to moving and everything. Right. Well, I very much appreciate your service. Thank you. Oh, you know, you're welcome. So I appreciate, you know, also, you know, your 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 father. He was in the military. What branch was he in? In the Air Force. In the Air he, Force. Yes, he was yeah. an aircraft mechanic. Yeah, I served, uh, in fact, my last uh, duty station was at Yakota Air Force Base in Tokyo. Oh, cool. So, okay, so tell me about your music. How did you get started? Um... Gosh, I, I was a writer first and foremost, even still, I um, am a songwriter, but um, I started out writing um, short stories, articles, magazines, and then I discovered uh, poetry, and um, and poetry just really spoke to me, and um, I've been, I'm a wordsmith, the words uh, come to me pretty easily, and, um, and I just like to... Like, I, I don't know, I feel like I have something to say, but I like to say it in a poetic way. And I decided after I got into the poetry to put music to my words, and that's how it came about. So you draw inspiration then from what? I mean, when you write to, and you think of poetry and you want to put this to, uh, you know, in lyric form, what is it that's inspiring you to come up with these words? Oh, wow. I mean, the inspiration just comes from everywhere, every walk of life, every thing that I do, eat, sleep, drink. It's just, um, I, I mean, I'm, my eyes are always open and I'm always paying attention. Um, if something moves me, I will write about it. If something hurt me, I will write about it. If, um, I can be eavesdropping and overhearing a conversation <laughs> and I'll write about it. Um, the, the, the inspiration just comes from everywhere. Uh, okay. Now, uh, do you, do you play instruments as well? I do. I play the guitar and I play the banjo. The banjo. Uh huh. And I play a little bit of piano, but I can't really say that I play it very well. But I do. I can write songs on it. I um, I use the piano to um, sometimes freshen up my melodies a little bit. If you always write on the guitar, um, it's you know I, I feel like my melodies start to come become a little stale and all sound the same. So sometimes I switch it up a bit and change instruments and write on that just to um, keep my melodies interesting. Now, were you playing guitar like uh, when you were traveling around with your parents? Yeah, you know what? I, I started playing um, instruments later in life. Um, I was like 18, 19 years old. Out of, um, just out of high school, I um, met a woman named Cheryl Jones, and, uh, and I watched her perform. She was a soul act piano player, and um, I was working in a music store at the time. And she came in to um, promote her new album, asked us to sell it, and um, gave us tickets to her CD release. And I went, and uh, she just floored me. My chin just fell to the floor. And when I watched her, I was like, oh, I want to do that for a living. And um, and I became good friends with her. She mentored me, and um, she taught me how to play the piano. And then I learned... I took the theory that she teached, um, taught me, and I learned, taught myself how to play the guitar. And um, 
I, I picked up the guitar a lot easier than I did the piano. I just wasn't coordinated enough. And I get frustrated quickly if I can't get something <laughs> quick. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean because, I mean, I was never able – I had a good friend of mine as I was growing up in Mexico who played the guitar. And, I mean, this was back when the Beatles were popular. And – uh, I, he tried teaching me, and I couldn't play. I couldn't even play the tambourine with any kind of a rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> so I was never musically inclined in terms of instruments. Although I really wish I could play some instruments because it's it's wonderful to be able to express yourself musically through an instrument. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, with the piano, I just, I really struggled and I'm the type of person that, you know, if I don't pick something up right away, I'm just like, oh, this is stupid. And, you know, I just applied the theory that I learned um, from the piano onto the guitar and I picked it up right away. And so I just felt like, yeah, this is my instrument. Now you live in Nashville right now. Is that correct? That is correct. And, uh, but are you, were you born in, in Nashville? No, I was not. I was born in Arkansas. Oh, okay. And then uh, at some point you decided you wanted to move to Nashville. Probably, let me see, is it because of the music? It is absolutely because of the music. <laughs> I was actually living in Atlanta and I was doing um, my music there. And um, and I, uh, I was talking to someone that I had met um, there in Atlanta who was from Nashville. And he was telling me that... Uh, he was like, look, there's only three cities in the United States that are worth anything as far as your songwriting is concerned, and that's L.A., New York, and Nashville. And he was like, you need to pick one and do your music there. And I was like, okay. So I decided Nashville was close. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and so I, I started going to Nashville like two weeks out of every month. I would stay there two weeks, and I would stay home two weeks in Atlanta until I got my first cut. And once I got my first cut, I decided to make the move. And I just moved here and um, been here ever since. And how long ago is, has that been? Um, I have been here now for eight, almost nine years. Oh, wow. Yeah. So how do you like it? I mean, what's your experience been like uh, there in Nashville? You know, I really love this town just because it is small and um, everybody is very accessible you can, um, it, I, I found it extremely easy to network and make friends, um, the ones that can make things happen for you. And, um, you know, they, uh, everybody's just open to, you know, to different things. And it's not just country music. I mean, fortunately enough, I do write country, but there's just more here um, that this town offers other than just country. Yeah, um, I know a lot of artists that uh, like they play like jazz and R and B, even R and B, uh, rock and, and uh, pop, and they're over there living in Nashville. So Nashville is known for a lot more than just country music, in my opinion. Absolutely, and it, it's just a very artistic city. Like everywhere you go, I mean, you can throw a stick and hit a musician, and it's just—it's <laughs> very—it's—it's it's very inspiring to be around um, so many people who are striving and doing the exact same thing that you want to do. You know what I mean? So, um, and everyone is accessible. From I mean, from the person who's just starting out to the person who is already established. It's they're so easy to contact and and get to know. You know, you know yeah. If, if if okay, you said you throw a stick and you're liable to hit an artist. Uh, that means that that the competition must be pretty furious over there then between these artists, right? That is very true. And um, the thing the thing about this town is you come here to meet the people that can help you, and then to make any sort of money, you have to leave <laughs> like I when I when I to get paid gigs you have to play outside of Nashville you no know, nowhere in Nashville is going to pay you um unless you do covers and that sort of thing um now that's not 100 percent true but it is hard to get a paid gig here in this town so I mean now that I've made the connections that I've made in um in helping me do what I want to do then I take 
you know, to go make money. I tour in Atlanta because I have a, a fan base out there because I used to live there for a while. I go to Kentucky. It's close. You know, I travel outside of um, the city to do my tours. But and it also helps um, to build a fan base um, to spread yourself out a little bit more instead of just the one place, because ultimately Nashville is a small town. Right. Now, you know, because you've known me for a while, I'm sure, and um, I also support a lot of young artists from different genres, and many of them uh, want to go to Nashville. So to young people that, you know, are there, have that passion and that talent with music that are wanting to go to Nashville, what kind of advice would you give them? My, um, I would say first and foremost, um, dig your heels in and be prepared to be here for a long time. It takes time. You have to build relationships. And um, the whole point, I mean, the whole um, saying, uh, it's not what you know, but who you know, it is very true. Um, you really need to know the people who are going to help you. Once you get into that inner circle, then that's where the talent comes in. And while you're getting to know these people, hone your craft. And when these people who have been doing this for years give you constructive criticism, take it. Don't get offended by it and um, learn from it and keep improving. Um, you never know everything. You can always learn something new. Always keep your mind open. Don't do, should you take all criticism as constructive? Do you think uh, people are really, really trying to help you, or are there some that are out there that just want to bring you down? Yeah, you know what? I have. There are some sharks out there, and they just want your money. And um, those are the ones that you, when when they listen to you and say that you're great, and you give me two thousand dollars or five thousand dollars, and I'll make you even better. Those are the ones I would say you need to look out for. The ones who say, hey, you have potential, but I think you need to work on this. You need to work on that. I would take that as constructive criticism and somebody that I would want to continue listening to. Um, you can tell in your heart. I just feel like in, in your heart of hearts, when somebody gives you constructive criticism, you can tell. Or when somebody gives you criticism because they're jealous, you can tell. And um, because it's the way they word it or the way what they say. You know, if they're telling you your song stinks because your pronouns are all wrong, I would say move on to the next person and not take their advice. You know what I mean? Right. But if they're giving you like good details about what is good about your song and what could be improved um, by it, I would take that as constructive criticism and pay attention. Now, did you have family support while you were going through this process? Oh, absolutely. Um, well, my mother, <laughs> she <laughs> she was my number one fan. <laughs> Unfortunately, she is no longer with us. Um, but yeah, she uh, always believed in... Um, and she never gave me any constructive criticism. Every song I ever wrote was always great in her mind. So <laughs> <laughs> that unconditional motherly love, you know. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, gotta love that. So, okay, let's talk a little bit about this EP, the best of independent country music. Uh, it's a it's a compilation EP with uh, other artists. What what do you think of it? What do you think of the of the process uh, of how all that came to be? And and um, and you've probably already gotten to know the other artists, right? Uh, at least through some form of communication. Absolutely, we've been um, staying in contact through Twitter. But um, you know what? I am first and foremost. I want to thank you because you made um, it possible for me to be on that uh, CD, and um, I'm very honored. Uh, to be on it because um, I'm in good company. Like every song on that CD is excellent and excellent quality, just great music. And it's just, it is an honor to be surrounded by such talent and um, to be a part of that is, is amazing and, and very cool for me. And um, I have a fan base and um They've listened to it, and I, I told them all, you know, I would promote my own link, and I would promote the entire album, and um, and they've all bought the whole thing instead of just the one, um, and just instead of just my song, they've bought the whole um, CD. So, I mean, it's 
I think it's incredible, and I'm very honored and happy to be on a part of it. Yeah, the music in there is really, really fantastic. I I, th- I was just fortunate enough. I, all I did was just contacted the artists and put them in touch with Roland Bilberg of Bilberg Entertainment, which, uh, of course, it's a London-based um, record I did label. Not, I did not realize that they were out of the U.K. because um, a large um, portion of my uh, fan base is out of the U.K., not as much here in the U.S. 